So what do we have left to do on this thing? Uh, we need to pull the front fenders off, pull the windshield out, pull the wiper motor out, pull the brake booster off, maybe uh, remove those brackets that we're not going to use in the engine bay, take the front bumper off, the lights off, <laughs> take it over the sandblaster and start sandblasting it. <laughs> the point of like stripping the car down like this is basically we want to get the best paint job possible on this body and we want the body work to be as flawless as possible and anytime you're working over factory paint, especially older paints that are a different technology from 30 years ago, we're going to get a lot smoother of a finish on this car by stripping the car back down to bare metal, doing a little bit of body work that we need to do to take the dents and dings out and then painting over that. It's just going to give us a beautiful flat finish. You can't beat a finish with stripping a car down to bare metal like that. Acid dipping is really good for older cars, hot rods, cars that are a lot more simpler, that don't have a lot of these, you know, complex curves and stuff. For newer cars, and I, I mean like newer, like 60s on, it's just not a good way to go. Media blasting is the best. It's, it's the most safest for the metal, and it's going to leave all your sealers and stuff unless you specifically want to take them out, and you're doing it knowing that you're going to have to go back in there and reseal it up, because if you don't, it's going to start rotting out. Well, we're going to go around and clean up some of the additional caulking and get that rushed out of there underneath the car here. It's, it's a little bit more economical, I believe, for me to manual labor clean a lot of this off. We don't want to spend at $1.75 a minute blast time. A sandblaster, when they remove rust, is uh, they're running about 120 to 150 pounds of pressure with straight uh, sand, which is so abrasive that it creates a lot of heat friction. And that's what creates the warpage in a lot of your sheet metal panels. Me running with my 30 pounds of pressure, which isn't going to warp the stuff, but naturally when you're still trying to erode rust off, you're still going to end up removing some of the metal because that's the bad metal that the rust is going away. The problem that you have with rust is all the way underneath this is just as bad. It just hasn't come through yet. Let's, let's be truthful. Rust is like cancer. Until you get it totally gone, it's going to keep on always coming. Basically, the car was pretty cherry, really, other than the rust that it has on it, but it didn't really have much damage to whatsoever. I think a lot of this is going to come on out pretty clean. You'll be surprised when we take a picture the next time around. Uh, I think you'll see that, uh, you'll say, wow. Yeah. We'll put plastic wrap over it, and if you don't have a canvas to put over it, I've got a canvas that you can put over the plastic. We can gift wrap that thing and you can drive it down the road and trail in the rain if you have to. Well, it's work. It'll be, be a little while before it's done. But overall, it's not in too bad a shape. Not too many dents, really. Just there's some rust that needs to be cut out and get going on it soon. You'll be happy to hear that, I'm sure. Now that the box is at the body shop, we've had some time to work on the cabrio, and the stage 3 kit has given us all sorts of fitment issues. Hi! How are you doing? Good. We're running into the motor mount right here. Okay. And that's this end coming off right here. And what we were wondering is if there's any way that you could possibly get a 45 get out of that. Get some kind of angle coming out of that before we run into there. What happens is if we come down, we can come straight off it like this and right. fit, but it, when we get all this stuff on there is when we start running start into issues. Start problem, right. Um, let me go see what I can come up here. Okay. So about like that right there. Yeah, that looks good. So basically, it'd probably be 25 bucks to solder that plus the cost of the adapter. Okay. That's good. Man, it's just been one thing after another the whole time. So right now, I'm really just fighting getting this bolt cut down and the bracket cut down to not interfere with the turbo, which is giving us a gap here or a gap here depending on where we're hitting. It's basically 
basically a, a pressure bracket it's applying pressure from here to here to keep the turbo housing tight so we don't lose boost for the housing and uh, if I took too much of it off it's going to weaken the bracket to the point of not being able to apply proper pressure there's no reason to not take this down a little bit more because then we're just going to weld a a big washer plate in there to um, suck up the, uh, the additional stress that's going to be on it and then we'll weld it closed back in here. That way I can drop this height down because I'm just not getting the height I need for that bolt to fit in there. Rob, grab the rubber mallet off the counter. with this G60 tranny. I thought I was going to have to buy a G60 front engine mount bracket. Turns out that the 2 liter 8 valve automatic tranny bracket bolted right up, so nice little bonus. Nope, it's going to break my tranny bracket now. It's fucking great. Broke that tongue off there. Now we get to weld aluminum. Just make it that much stronger. Now you see how I'm standing under these boom like this? That's because I have life insurance. The way I had to put that turbo in there, I got, <clears throat> got the engine mount bolted to the motor. So I have the, not only the rear engine mount bracket, but I have to line the actual engine mount itself up with its home onto the subframe. Makes it a little bit more difficult. what I'm going to do is just stick the jack underneath this side of the car, pull the wheel, pull the ball joints, just to get the axle just a little bit out of the way of the motor, just kind of binding me up a little bit. Do that and give us all the space we need. What am I hitting now? The downturn from the turbo is hitting the firewall. I don't think we can bolt a fucking downpipe on the way it is right now. The good thing is APR designed that downturn to be bolted on on the car. So, assuming it's just completely impossible to get in there because the engine bay we're in, I should be able to remove that downturn. If we do have to cut it and rotate it around and re-weld it a little bit, I should be able to do it on the car. So rather than just say, okay, I'm not going to put the motor in, I'm going to go ahead and put the motor in and then just take the downturn off the car and if I can't take the downturn off the car it'll only take five minutes to take the motor back out anyway so it's not a big deal. I really wanted to use the APR stage 3 kit on this car because we're an APR dealer and I wanted to be able to demo the stage 3 kit to customers because it's an awesome kit. It's very well put together. The thing is they've done everything to make putting the, the kit into this particular chassis completely the wrong way to fit into our application so Versus usually, like if we're going to do a 1.8T swap into a Mark II or a Mark III, using the transverse motor and the transverse turbo is to our benefit because if we use a longitudinally mounted engine from like a Passat, it puts the turbo, and we use the exhaust manifold intended for it, it puts the turbo on top of the engine mount bracket. Well, APR designed the Stage 3 kit to put the turbo on top of the engine mount bracket, even on a transverse car, but they did that to buy themselves that, that much more space for the downturn. But for this, it's just completely screwed us because it's difficult enough to get a regular turbo on top of that motor mount bracket. This thing, was it's huge compared to the stock turbo, so we had to get it in there on top of that engine mount bracket. And then every line that went to it had to be modified to also clear the bracket. And now, once it's actually even in the car, now we're fighting that downturn because the angle it is at, it's just barely, barely pushing up into the firewall. So we're going to have to end up cutting that thing in half real clean and welding it back up with it just rotated just probably five degrees down so it's been a very frustrating experience getting it in there it, it, it'll be worth it it'll be rewarding because it's gonna haul ass but it was it was a battle the whole way getting that thing to, to bolt up reattach the ball joint now so I got my suspension in place My training mount lines up fine, the rear engine mount lines up fine since it was bolted to the engine put it in there, so my front mount does
doesn't quite line up. I'm wondering, is it the turn two motor mount inserts that are not giving me enough flex to line this up? Is it the automatic two liter bracket that I'm using? Or am I just bouncing off the firewall just enough to cause this to not do what I need to do? But if anything, I don't think it would be the firewall thing because I actually need the motor to come forward just a hair to really fit in there. I'm not real happy with the way the motor's sitting in the car. I think I'm going to take it back out before we go any further and trim the motor mounts down a little bit and possibly even try and change the front motor mount bracket, that automatic bracket. You know, I broke the tongue off the training. It looks like it's putting a little bit of twist on the engine. It's kind of sitting in the cockeyed, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take it back out probably Monday morning. Let's just call it in.